Are we filming now? Okay. Let's talk about your journey. Um, Cause you're not originally from this area, right? No, I um, grew up in, in a little bitty town, um, Winoka, Oklahoma, um, kind of off the panhandle, mm -hmm. uh, little town. Um, my father was a car dealer and owned a grocery store, um, a little clothing store, all in this little town. Um, and what was life like growing up there for you? Very, um, very normal. We'd walk to school. Everybody knew everybody. Um, you know, I'm full blood Lebanese and we had several Lebanese. We all lived on the same street. We were all merchants. And uh, in Oklahoma, everybody's kind of blonde and blue eyed mm -hmm. and redhead and green eyes. Mm -hmm. And then there were us. <laughs> so I always kind of felt a little different. Mm -hmm. I'll be honest. I did. I felt a little different than everybody else because we were. Right. Know? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, what was home life like? Well, my mom worked alongside my dad, and um, we had just a very kind of modest home, nothing special. Um, and we always had beautiful food. We're, we're foodies. My mom always uh, had great three meals a day. Our house was immaculate. My, my parents were both kind of like um, perfectionists. Mm -hmm. I am not, <laughs> but they were. And so it was like this, not that, mm -hmm. do this, and also what will the neighbors think, you know? Mm -hmm. That kind of upbringing, um, belief in God, huge, you know? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Um, and I had uh, an older brother and an older sister. Uh, he was 10 years older than me and my sister was eight years older. And then there's me, mm -hmm. and then my baby sister that's three years younger than me. So did you um, have to participate in the household, keeping of the house and keeping it perfect? Did you do things around the house? And We were taught to do what was before us. It was there, you did it. You just didn't ask any questions. My mom and dad were like, everything was always put together and put back as we left the house, mm -hmm. picked up your clothes. Uh, we didn't have to wash. Mm -hmm. Mom did all of that. Mm -hmm. But it was like, keep it straight. Right. So, yeah, very, you know, grew up in a very sort of immaculate home. Um, and, but, but we were just taught whatever's before you, you did it, you know? So from Oklahoma to Lafayette, Louisiana, how'd you end up here? Oh gosh, well, I, I'd spend my summers in New Iberia. My big sister was eight years older than me. She married uh, a guy from New Iberia. And so I would come down as a teenager and spend my summers uh, in New Iberia. And I immediately fell in love with the lifestyle a lot of fun, mm -hmm. a lot of parties. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I um, made friends easily there. And so every summer I would come and uh, my birthday's in July, so I'd always spend my birthday there. And in fact, when I came to UL, I think that they put in the annual that I was from New Iberia, because uh, oh. they just thought I was, <laughs> you know, I spent so much time there. Uh, so it was, uh, I fell in love with the way of life here, yeah. So you were a student at UL? I was. That's fantastic. I didn't know that. No degree. I didn't know that. <laughs> no degree. No degree. No, no degree. Um, I think I was, back then, in those days, um, a woman could be a school teacher, a nurse, I hate blood, um, or a secretary. Mm -hmm. So my, my father said, you, secretarial science, you just need to go into that. That's, mm -hmm. that's what you'll be. Mm -hmm. So that's what I did. Is that what you became at some point? Well, I did. I, I did secretarial work for in the oil center for many years when I first married and before I was married. And then even through my pregnancy with my son, I probably did that eight to ten years. Mm -hmm. I was really bad at it. <laughs> <laughs> I was, was not your strong suit. No, it wasn't. <laughs> and uh, I, we, I can laugh about it now, uh, but I was fired from a lot of jobs. I really was. I was fired. So how did you, this bad secretary who had been fired, um, get into the car business? My husband, Billy Jack Moss, was a local uh, boy, went to Laviette High, went to UL, graduated UL, only child, uh, and he always had a love of the car business. And mm -hmm. so it's really strange because my father was a car dealer, but mm -hmm. he sold out, um, and he was all General Motors at the time, which it was great lines Big, in those right. days. Oh yeah, Cadillac was king then. And so Billy Jack just said, I'm gonna be a car dealer. And he just started working in the car business uh, for different dealers when he graduated college. And then I'll, I'll never forget him saying, uh, we're gonna be a Honda dealer. 
And I said, what's that? And he said, that's one. And we were in driving, it was like, oh my God, it's so ugly. It, it looks like a, a motorcycle. <laughs> he said, yeah, but that's where it's at now. Economy is it's in. So that's where we started. We started with Honda. And uh, he was self-made. He ris risked everything mm -hmm. to do it. And um, then after that, we added Mercedes. After that, we added BMW. Um, so, and actually, um, you know, he, he's deceased. He mm -hmm. died, um, gee, 28 years ago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you were at Moss from the ground up? I was. Yeah, I was the first um, receptionist. I remember sitting there. He didn't there. fire you, did he? Oh, no, he didn't. <laughs> but but he, he would always say, don't forget you've been fired from many jobs. It, it was a standard joke, and he would tell all our friends, you know, how many do jobs were you fired from? <laughs> Several, until I found myself. But I, I like marketing, and I did work at um, Fox back in the day when Charles Shotland owned it, was a friend of ours, mm -hmm. and he said, Sharon, come work for me. So we had the dealership, and um, Corey was starting kindergarten. So I said, that, that sounds like fun, I'd like that. So I would head out in the mornings. He said, work around your schedule, get in around 9.30, mm -hmm. work, come back and meet the school bus when Corey was coming in. Mm -hmm. and I did really well, I liked it. And I, was, I, I was a top producer and I was a part-timer and I wow. loved it, it was fun. That was fantastic. A lot of fun. Yeah. Um, so we, we now know what Moss is today. <clears throat> um, and you, you know, in this area, people know your tagline, uh -huh. they know your face. And I, when I called you to say, hey, I'm doing this with Katie on a famous thing, would you be a part of it? Your first response <laughs> to me was, oh, I don't consider myself famous. Nah. No. Um, what do you think of Moss now and it's become a staple, not just in the car business, but in business here in Acadiana and you at the helm? Well, you know, it's, it's the strangest thing Years ago, I was driving up to the dealership. You know, it's just so automatic. You, you drive into work and just, you get there, you're thinking about all the other things in, uh, in your, for your day. And one day, I drove up and I was just, I really stopped and I was, I was sort of taken back that, oh my gosh, look at this. I mean, wow, wow. I was so busy doing mm -hmm. that I didn't step back and just say, wow, you know? And I, I was sort of surprised myself that I'd been able to, to do the things I had to do. It, it was not an easy job. It was not easy from taking over when my husband died. Um, things were really in, in, in bad shape. Mm -hmm. We were really, in the oil industry was mm -hmm. at a very low, low. It was just a lot of things against me. I had a lot of adversity. And, um, but I think that um, one of my friends told me this, and she was a girl that owned an oil company. She told me, she said, you know what, Sharon? You're a person that likes, the harder it is, the better you do. And I think when I used to play a lot of tennis, I played about 30 years worth of tennis. And I, I did best when, when, when the opponent was the strongest. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I like the competition always makes you better, I think. Mm -hmm. So and I really, I don't think I'm famous. I think that um, we've marketed Moss Motors really well. And I like marketing, probably if I have any strength in business, I would say marketing is my strength. So car dealerships, predominantly a male dominated <laughs> industry. Yeah. Um, what has it taken for you as a woman to break through and not just from a business standpoint, but as an individual um, to not throw in the towel and be like, <laughs> I'm out of this. Well, you know, when I started, gosh, 28 years ago, it was really, really very few of us. Mm -hmm. It's becoming more and more. I just got back from California last week mm -hmm. uh, at a BMW meeting, and there were, uh, I think, in the women, I counted two others, uh, one out of Houston, one out of Dallas, mm -hmm. Girl, younger girls, moms, you know, mm -hmm. married. Um, I think it takes um, a lot of perseverance, and I think it takes a lot of um, not being afraid. Mm -hmm. I've always said I'm not a, I'm, I'm not afraid. I think you have to um, learn the business. There's, I'm still learning the business. The business has changed tremendously right now, and so there's a lot of change that's that's you have to evolve. Mm -hmm. You have to uh, have great people. Mm -hmm. You don't. You know, I am. I'm just one person. I have a hundred about 165 employees now, 
So I really think that I have some great managers. I care about my people. And I won't hire just anyone. Um, I, I'm pretty particular. I like honest people. Mm -hmm. I like God-fearing people. I like family people. Um, and so I think there's a lot of things that, a lot of things that come together. You, yes, you have to have tenacity. You have to have um, that small thing inside of you. I call it my gut mm -hmm. about people, who to hire, who not to hire. Um, and I think you have to be, my dad told me, do the right thing. It mm -hmm. always comes back to you. To, you know, right now there's a lot of focus on women um, in business, um, pay, you know, equal pay and um, promotion, fairness and promotability, and also women working in an environment that if something makes them uncomfortable, they're able and feel comfortable enough to talk about it and tell someone and know that something will be done. Do you think women in the workforce, all here we are in 2018, do you think we'll ever be seen as equal? Well, we've made great strides, um, but it's really, it's still there. Mm -hmm. It's still the elephant in the room. Mm -hmm. um, I, I will tell you that I believe, uh, I hired a young woman the other day. Um, she came to me and she had background in, in finance and insurance. And I hired her and she told me, when she said, you won't be sorry. And I will, will tell you, she's only been with me maybe about mm, four or five months. Mm -hmm. And she's killing it. Why? She's a woman. She believes in herself. And the manager that she works with, I asked him the other day, how do you like her? He said, I love her. I think women bring to the table, men, men are, are men and they're, they're more one dimensional. Mm -hmm. We have to be multi-dimensional because mm -hmm. we're, we do a lot of things. We, we're mothers, we're sisters, we have outside events. We're, we're mm -hmm. different, a man, I've always said, gee, I wish I was a man. All they gotta do is get up and go, make a living. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a big thing. But as women, we got, some of us have to go make the living and mm -hmm. cook, clean, make sure everything's done, take care of the kids. So women, I, I really love, I, as a woman, I like helping other women. I don't understand the um, knocking other people down or holding people down. As a woman, I want to, I want to bring them up. Mm -hmm. I want to help them. So whenever I get the chance, um, I had a little session the other day at the health club with two girls that both getting divorces, mm -hmm. both trying to start a career. What do I think? What should, and, I, and I sat for about 30 minutes with them and told them what I thought, whether it was something that helped them. I hope it did. But I also said, believe in yourself. I had to believe in myself when nobody believed in me. Nobody. I was walking down that road all alone. But, you know, as a woman, you just have to garner that strength. Mm -hmm. And you cannot be a victim. Right. I don't like being a victim. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Not only for your business sense are you well known in this area, but um, you're kind of a fashion icon as well. <laughs> no theory. <huh? laughs> um, tell me about, you know, what you feel like, what it means when you get up and get dressed in the morning, um, what people see and <laughs> what that gives off. I've always been, you know, um, my mom and dad were both gray dressers, and they always said, you know, the, you never get a chance to make a fresh first impression again. Mm -hmm. So in business, I think um, if you look successful and you look like, at least you're going to get in the door. After mm -hmm. that, you better know what you're talking about. But I've, I've always been a person that cared about appearances. Um, I, it's not about how much money you spend. I am a person that loves a bargain. Mm -hmm. I have been known to buy... I, I love something from Target. I mm -hmm. mean, I, I don't <laughs> care. I just, but I do love clothing and I do love interiors and I'm not gonna, you know, shy away from that. It, it's who I am. Everybody has to be what, what they're comfortable with. Mm -hmm. And you know, I think there's beauty. There's so many different kinds of beauty today and, and so many different styles. You know, you can, you can go to a cocktail party and wear a lot of different things today. You don't have, not everybody has to be alike. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I like that, I like diversity. But I just, I don't know, I, I've just had a, always been, I don't know, even when I played tennis, I was always the fashionista on the court, <laughs> good or bad or indifferent, <laughs> could be bad. But um, I like what I like, and, and I don't think you should have to apologize for who you are. If, I always say that um, somebody, people might take you, uh, say, well, her lipstick matches her outfit, we're just going to discount that. But I, I've, I've become, I just got back from that meeting with a lot of dealers that know me, and mm -hmm. I had 
I had a couple, my son was with me and I had a couple guys come up and say, your mom, da 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 da, do you know, back in the day when she started and they were saying little things that had happened and how proud they were of me. So uh, I think when your uh, people, your peers compliment you, it's the best there can be. Somebody says, yeah, Sharon, you've done good. It's a great feeling, you know. As far as your fashion is concerned, is there <laughs> any type of clothing or any type of accessory that you just can't go without? Oh, well, I, I do love earrings. I love, I love earrings a lot. Uh, so I always like kind of say, okay, what earring am I going to, right now I'm into the tassels. I, I'm loving that. I have a drawer full. I don't know how many more I can buy now, but <laughs> if I see a color I don't have, I'm going to buy it probably. So I, yeah, I like earrings. I'm not, you know, and I like color. Oh. I like color. Yeah, I do. I, I like uh, color. I'm, yeah. Um, we know that, we know Moss, um, but we know, also know that Moss is expanding and there'll be a new version of Moss in a different part of the city. Um, tell us about that. Well, the new Mercedes-Benz facility is going to be uh, on uh, going out towards Abbeville, mm -hmm. uh, Johnson Street ex mm -hmm. extension. Um, it's a $10 million facility, land and property. It's 35,000 square feet. It is really big and really beautiful, a lot of glass. Uh, we will also put in an AMG center. We're the only uh, Mercedes dealer in the state that will have an AMG center. Mm -hmm. AMG stands for the racing end mm -hmm. and the high performance end of Mercedes. So you'll be able to come in, sit down in this area that's all just, you know, beautiful. It's got a wall that you can order your car, choose your fabrics, choose your colors, and uh, it's interactive wall, it's really cool. Mm -hmm. um, so we're proud of that. Um, our hours will be longer out there so that we can uh, make sure everybody has time to come in. You know, people are busy. Everybody mm -hmm. does, the one thing we don't have enough is time. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna try to do a, a, a thing where you can buy a car within an hour, get in and out, mm -hmm. you know? so. We're excited. Um, we're going to be doing some uh, events out there as well that we have planned. Uh, so you guys aren't abandoning Surrey Street? We are not. Not at present. No, no. Our BMW facility is still kicking over there. Honda as well. So, you know, times are changing and yeah. we try to evolve and, and do what the public wants. Okay, so you are a successful mother, businesswoman, philanthropist. Um, does Sharon <coughs> Moss, do you have it all? Oh, no. <laughs> I don't think I have it all. I mean, I think, I think um, I've been very blessed. Yes, I've been very blessed. There are times when I really went into a, a, something I could have died like a dog. And it seems like every time when I get put up against that wall, something happens and I end up being okay. I win, you know? So I really think, um, I have to say the hand of God, not Sharon Moss, but the hand of God has always, I've just always felt that, that when things could have really just gone the other way, they seem to pull out. And I, I, that's not me. Yes, I per persevere and yes, I give 110, but I really think the hand of God, I really have to say, because I, I don't, I really don't think that I'm that smart or I'm that, I think I'm more than anything intuitive. I have intuition and I have these, this way I feel about when I start a business deal. And it's usually I'll read and I'll look all, and I'll take advice from those around me. Always mm -hmm. surround yourself with the best and the brightest, mm -hmm. which is a, I don't know how men feel about that. I, I think sometimes I see men that don't want to surround themselves because they want to be the king. Mm -hmm. I don't feel that way at all. I feel I need every, everybody to help. Every word I take into consideration what everybody's saying around me mm -hmm. and then I'll make my decision and I'll read up, you know, I'll, mm -hmm. but, but, um, you know, there's a, and that's not to say I haven't made a bad decision here and there. Of course I have. Mm -hmm. you make a lot of decisions, you will. But um, I do believe, I have to say, at the end of the day, the hand of God, that's, I, I think he just has really been present in my life. You told me about um, being an athlete and a very good athlete. Um, what is something else that people don't know about you? Well, let's see. I... Um, I was a good athlete growing up. I was a basketball star. Mm -hmm. My average was 33 points a game. I'm left-handed. I can still shoot. Every once in a while when I walk through reds, nobody's watching. <laughs> I'll go get a basketball and I'll dribble and I'll shoot. Just to make sure I still have that hook shot. <laughs> I can still do it. Um, 
very, um, uh, that's, that's the competitive side of, of business is competitive. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've always had that competitive edge that I like to win. I do not like to lose. So you won't see me water skiing because I'm <laughs> terrible. I'm bad. Okay, so we're going to do, as we wrap this up, we're going to do kind of a round robin of questions. Um, not necessarily rapid fire, but whatever you think about, we'll move on from there. Okay. Okay, first, um, the most important object you own. Oh, my gosh. Uh, it would, now, here, uh, it would be my diamond ring that Billy Jack Moss gave me before he, he died. Yeah. Mo uh, best book you've ever read? Oh, I have... Uh, I really like uh, Driven to Delight. It's a, it's a car mm -hmm. guy written for, yeah. Favorite time of the year, favorite season of the year? Mm. I kind of like spring. Spring. A quote you live by? Too much who is given, much is expected. Biggest fear? Mm, biggest fear. It's not death. Um, yeah, are you afraid of anything? <laughs> I once told somebody that, you know, if I had to die tomorrow, that I would say I've had a great life, you know, really mm -hmm. have. I mean, I had some ups and downs and some things, hills and valleys, but, but I've been really, really blessed. And I guess it would be the fear of something chronically, to be chronically ill, mm -hmm. you know, just to chronically, I'm not afraid of death, mm -hmm. really not, because uh, we're all going to die. Mm -hmm. but, but to be chronically ill and incapacitated, I guess that would be my fear. Um, what superpower would you have, if you could have any? Oh, uh, to read people's minds. Oh. Yeah, that's a... well, um, is there any one person in particular advice that you follow most often? Dr. Curtis Roy. He's, he's a great, he's a great businessman. And Curtis is always, um, he's always pulling for me. Mm -hmm. So, you know, he always wants to tell me what I need to do to get better. He's very proud of me. He's, he's not at all uh, taken back. But, He's not impressed with me that much, <laughs> actually. But, but in times of stress, when I have something stressful going on, he will offer me some advice. And he's very, he's really, really smart. And I really, I, I like his advice. Favorite place in the world? Oh, I like Italy a lot. I think I, I'd have to say um, Rome. Mm -hmm. um, what's one thing, you mentioned water skiing, but what's something yeah. you were terrible at? Well, water skiing is high, <laughs> high on the list. I'm not a good water person. Uh, I could probably never jump out of a plane or do anything at heights. Uh, I do not like heights. No. Favorite ice cream flavor? Oh, plain old vanilla. Yeah, plain I'm a vanilla plain girl, Jane. too. Yeah. Um, what makes you angry? When people are rude to, to when people talk down to other people, when they're mm -hmm. like at a restaurant, Somebody not being nice to a waiter, not giving everybody, you know, give a, I give everybody a chance. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I, going in, I always want to go in and be kind and pleasant, and, and, and I'm a giver. I mm -hmm. like to give. But when I see people that are, are stingy, I guess, or, or rude to someone that they feel is beneath them, mm -hmm. I, I don't. What impresses you? S kindness. I think, I think um, beauty there's beauty and then there's the inside of a person. Mm -hmm. And I think if you don't, my mother would always tell me, Sharon Kay, you know, beauty is only takes you so far. If you don't have anything inside, then you're just, you know, mm -hmm. you're a shell. You're a shell. So any tattoos? Nope. Not getting any. <laughs> <laughs> if you didn't have to sleep, what would you do with the extra time? Oh, cause I'm, I'm a person that's constantly doing, I never quit. I have to take a pill to sleep. So um, I'd probably be rearranging something in the house or watching my favorite show. Like I've got Netflix now. I'm just really into the crown. I'm mm -hmm. just loving that. Mm -hmm. I can't get enough of it. So I'd be watching. <laughs> I'd, You'd be watching that. Oh yeah. I love the crown. What takes up too much of your time? <sighs> well, probably it is business thinking about, you know, what's next. Um, but you know, that is the role of somebody who's a business person that's mm -hmm. really kind of has to be I'm, I'm able to manage somebody told me one day that i'm very good at compartmentalizing mm -hmm. that i can i can put it over there and usually when i come home unless mm -hmm. it's something really i can i can wait till i always say 
I'll do it tomorrow. I'll think about that tomorrow. Mm -hmm. When it's, you know, um, you have to do you have to do that, or you wouldn't have a your life would be just miserable if you were always yeah. If you were always carrying yeah, everything constantly. all over yeah. the place. Um, if a such thing existed, what would be your perfect day? Well, I would think it would be somewhere where there's a beach, mm -hmm. beautiful beach, a good glass of wine, a very kind of alfresco atmosphere where you're eating outside, but it's it's not hot and muggy like Louisiana. <laughs> it's like cool <laughs> and breezy, and you're you're with your your best guy, which would be Dr. Curtis Roy, and and you'd just be a, a day of not thinking about anything else, but just living, mm -hmm. not thinking about anything else. What is something that someone told you that you carry with you every day? I would say my dad saying that, um, you know what, do the right thing. It always comes back to you. Um, what brings you peace? Well, I like to go to church um, by myself on a Sunday morning. When I, I, not, not to say that I go every Sunday. I'm, mm -hmm. not, I'm not Catholic. Mm -hmm. I'm Greek Orthodox, <laughs> which is very close. But just going in for that hour, sitting by myself, and just, I come out of there feeling great. Yeah. If you weren't um, the boss at Moss, <laughs> what would you be doing? Oh, my God. I'd probably be, have a clothing store, women's clothing store, or an interior design firm. Yeah. And we're done with our round robin, but I wanted to um, ask you about this. You mentioned, you know, being um, different. In, in your small town in Oklahoma. Mm. Um, what has that done for your life? Well, <clears throat> it's a, you know, that the feeling that I got <clears throat> a lot of times was very, very, um, it, it just rendered you just kind of feeling terrible. And so in my life, I think that I always take the person for the person. You know, if someone, I, I actually have somebody who's my top salesman in Mercedes and has been for a long time. And he's a great guy. Why? He works harder than everybody else. He's different, mm -hmm. you know. But I always say it's the person. It's not, it, you know, I judge a person by the person, who that person is, and not the color of their skin or where they're from. Or, you know, I, I'm always amazed when I meet people sometimes and they don't want to tell me where they're from. Like they're from Mamu or something, mm -hmm. like, like that's a bad thing. Mm -hmm. I'm like, so where are you from? And they're like, well, it's over by, and I'm like, where are you from? And they're, <laughs> Mamu. I'm like, okay, good, you know? Like there's something wrong with being from, Ma you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like that I would judge them because they're not from, you know, New York or something. But I, I just think that we all, it's a big world, and people need to love one another. And I mean, I know it sounds kind of sappy, but it's true. The longer it goes, the more it goes. And the more you travel, you go to different places, you see the differences. Mm -hmm. We're in the deep south here. It's a very different place. Yeah, absolutely. It's a very different place. And um, good or bad, we've got some wonderful things about our area. I love Lafayette. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but, you know, people just need to, to take that away. Get to know the person before you judge the person. We're all, and look, I, I'd be first one to raise my hand. I've done that in the past. I've seen somebody go, I really don't like her. And then I'm like, well, give her a chance. Let's get mm -hmm. to know her. And then my whole attitude changes. But you have to check yourself. I think we all have to check ourselves. Do you think people misconceive you? Do you think people oh. look at you and think one thing and... Oh, yeah, I know they do. I, I know for sure. Because <laughs> I, I get it back. You know, it's come back to me like, oh, so-and-so said so. And I'm like, who? who? I don't know that person. So it's, it's, I can't defend myself to everyone. Mm -hmm. And I can't know everyone, you know. So mm -hmm. it's really hard. And being a woman, let's just say it like it is, a man, the way man, men treat each other mm -hmm. is a lot easier than the way we women go about it. You are so right about women that. Women are, they're, they're vicious creatures, you mm -hmm. know? They, and I, look, I am one. And I'm just saying that we, we sometimes judge a book by its cover and we shouldn't. We don't get to know the person and we say something mean or cruel about them. And it's just not even so. So when I get a chance, I, I have a very... Uh, different array of friendships that I have mm -hmm. and um, I, I love my friends. I, if I'm your friend, I'm your friend to the end. I will, I will support you. Nobody's going to say a bad word to me about you because mm -hmm. I'm going to stand up for you. That's the kind of friend I am and I, I have some great friends. Mm -hmm. I have some old friends that I've had for that we were young moms together mm -hmm. and I have new friends. I have business girl friends mm -hmm. that I can bounce things off of that I love. I'm, you know, I, 
but yes, I, I know, I know that's always been my plight though. From the time I was a little girl, I've always gotten that. Mm -hmm. And you know, I'm getting to the point now that I just say, oh well, what can right. I do? Right. I know who I am now. You know, I know who I am. Um, what advice would you give to a younger you? Don't bite back. <laughs> uh, uh, when somebody is mean and, and hateful and mean to you, don't come back and, 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 and double time it and give it back to them. I did that when I was younger. I was thinking, well, why am I getting this? I didn't do anything. I'll just bite back. Now you've given them license to say, oh, yeah, she really is that. Mm -hmm. So the younger Sharon would have been just kill them with kindness, you know, kill everything with kindness. And, you know, when you're kind and generous, people, or you smile and say hello, even to people you don't know. That's, my mom taught me that. My mom was beautiful, and she was very, very smart. Mm -hmm. She was uh, an, an overcomer, but she'd always say, just be nice. You know, nice, you're, you know. But you learn that as you get older. Right. You know, when you're young, you're, you're pretty feisty. Right. Very feisty. <laughs> pretty feisty. Um, anything else that maybe I did not ask or we did not talk about that um, <clears throat> you know about you that you want to share? Well... I, I think that I've always been able to do what I had to do and walk, march down the road by myself. And I think as a woman, if you can get to that point, I, I know some people that used to say they couldn't go to Reds by themselves. They, 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 they had to have a partner to go work out with. And, and, you know, I think we all feel sort of like that the more it goes, the more you're able to, the, the more you do and the more you're out there and the more you have to endure the you know the stronger you get and you you're able life life's going to throw you some lemons mm -hmm. everybody mm -hmm. it may be money it may be divorce it may be a child it may be illness it's called life mm -hmm. so you got to pick it up and do the best you can with what you've got and nobody has a perfect life i, I really don't have a perfect life i'm i'm, I'm really blessed but i'm an overcomer i always want to say the glass is half full perfect